Welcome, top news today. Please subscribe and support this channel. Meghan Markle, the headline screamed, wants to be Princess Diana 2.0. Presumably not everything to do with being Diana, not the early death, not the scorn, just a sainthood. The claim, asserted by Diana's biographer Andrew Morton in a new book published ahead of next month's wedding, refers to Meghan's apparent wish to carry out charity work and assume the vacant title of Princess of People's Hearts. It comes from an unnamed childhood friend of Meghan's, and their opinion may or may not be true, along with other witterings faithfully written down by Morton that Meghan was always fascinated by Diana and, like the rest of us plebs, cried at her funeral. But let's stop to consider the theory, for a moment. Who would want another Diana? Because one was bad enough. The main polish for St. Dee's halo is her charity work and the many good causes she supported as Princess of Wales. The Diana effect helped boost their profiles and fundraising. Fair dues, AIDS, leprosy and landmines, among many other causes, had more attention because the world's most photographed woman decided to promote them. But upon her divorce in 1996 Diana divested herself of 100 charities and retained just six. Most have since done perfectly well without her, and it's doubtful that, had she lived, any would still see her patronage as beneficial. Diana was many things to many people, but to the world at large she was mostly an entertainment. A beautiful woman dressed up and paraded for us to applaud or despise, depending on our whim. She filled acres of newsprint, but she provoked a series of constitutional crises we could all have done without. The first was adultery, the second divorcing the heir to the throne, the third was the ugly public mood that followed her untimely death in a Paris road tunnel and almost dethroned the Queen, and a fourth was when the Queen had to intervene and end the trial of former butler Paul Burrell for stealing her underwear and much else, it was claimed. A fifth, still bubbling away, is if Camilla will ever be Queen. Being Diana was no fun either. She was ridiculed for being called scritchy by her married lover in secretly recorded tapes. She had a series of boyfriends before and after her divorce who were, almost to a man, absolute rotters. She was accused of stalking, silent phone calls and marriage breakdowns. Diana is also solely responsible for the unhappy phenomenon that is James Hewitt, and his best forgotten appearance on a celebrity version of The X Factor that still gives TV critics nightmares. And never mind Paul Burrell, a man who, were it not for Diana, might have achieved happiness as a gay florist a lot sooner, and without constantly ingratiating himself on TV and cruise ships with yet another book on etiquette. What else do we owe Diana? Mohammed El Fayed has mercifully gone quiet, and people seem to have stopped licensing her signature on tubs of margarine, which must be a relief to all concerned. But we have retained. From the moment roses were first tossed at her flag-draped coffin when it appeared on a gun carriage in the gateway of St. James Palace, a national habit of emoting without thinking. To feel, now, is more important than to overcome. To make big, tearful Bambi eyes at your adulterous husband matters more than repairing the damage he did to you. A new mum is asked how she feels, an actor how it felt to play a role, a colleague wants to tell you how the gender pay gap makes them feel. It's as though, the more we can emote, the more saintly a person we must be, the nearer we are to Diana. But Diana was, to use currently fashionable words, a privileged, elitist, mentally unwell scion of the aristocracy, the result of centuries of breeding for looks rather than intellect. When she walked down the aisle of St. Paul's in a dress of pure candy flas, she represented the last throw of the Mills and Boone's 19th century dice the ridiculous ideal of virginal womanhood that almost no woman managed before or since. And she told us that most of the time she felt awful. Who would want another Diana? Not Charles, for obvious reasons, even though the eighth most popular Google search for Princess Diana was wants to know who she was married to, because apparently some people have forgotten. Not Camilla who once had bread rolls chucked at her in the supermarket for causing heartache to Diana and who thanks to her is looking at an old age where she may be a second class, and only semi-royal, royal not her boys either, who like most bereaved children will have defied her a little and who, having witnessed their parents each manipulate and be abused by the press, 
are so averse to the most anodyne of media coverage the royal lawyers are on speed dial. No government wants another Diana and the constitutional upsets it would bring. Even the fashion industry, which did so well out of using the princess as a model, has no need of another when it has the mute and meek Kate as a coat hanger. Perhaps Elton John would want another D but even he would know that another fragile, youthful, incompatible girl in the royal household would be a recipe for the same depression, bulimia and self-harm which Diana suffered. It is nearer to the truth to say that the world wants Meghan to be Diana 2.0, that we cannot look at a future royal bride without putting her into a box and attributing thoughts and feelings to her. Meghan is being set up to fail. She's already being cast as a troublemaker whose mixed-race heritage will shake the royals, whose dislike of Donald Trump will be a political headache and whose wish to use her profile for good causes is, for some reason I cannot fathom, seen as self-promotion. At this stage in her engagement to Charles, Diana was fated, beloved, and terrified to the point of vomiting. Meghan, by comparison, is picked at, criticized, and seems commendably calm and collected. The benefit, perhaps, of having a career and first marriage behind you. Yet to many she is an opinionated and worldly woman who has dared to mention me too and was so heartless as to return her first wedding ring to her ex by registered post. No one asked how Diana returned hers, if she did. Whether it is better to send back unwanted jewelry in a brisk manner, or do it in person in a ridiculous, tearful, snot-ridden goodbye. Emoting overthinking, again. Fair play to Meghan for using her brain, and fair play to her for still being keen on the idea of marrying Harry when her public treatment up to this point has been, unlike so many other royal brides, tinged with racism, snobbery and nostalgia for a woman whose trip down the aisle was the start of an unhappy roller coaster. You can keep your Diana 2.0. I'd rather see Meghan Markle be herself, and I think that's exactly what we're going to get. Please subscribe channel. Thank you for watching.